And my name is Jason Kennedy, and uh, I'm just going to ask you one more time if we love the movie or if we love the movie. That's what I thought. If you guys are okay with it, I would love to bring the cast out so we can uh, show some love and talk to them for a little bit. Is that cool with you? All right, let's do it. In no particular order, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fomka Jansen, Abigail Cohen, Tom Lewis, Livy Birch, DJ Caruso. Come on, come on in, guys. They're having a little moment over there. <laughs> and then virtually, Nina Dobrev and New York Times best-selling author, you know her name, Francine Rivers. They're going to join us in just a little bit. Are they up live? There's Nina and Francine. Hi, Hi ladies. Hi, guys. Hi. How you doing? We're, We're good. Fine. Oh yeah. my gosh, we miss having you here, but it's so good to see you virtually. It, it was just such an incredible film. I screened it uh, a couple of days ago with my family and was truly just blown away and getting to see it a second time. I love it even more. And you and I got a little time to chat. It's so good to see you and all of you. And um, Francine, we have to start with you because this is your baby and this is years in the making. And I can't imagine the feeling seeing it for the first time. Uh, what's going through your mind and, and how happy are you right now? I'm very happy. <laughs> it's, it's far exceeded my expectations. I've really been thrilled watching it be made and also having seen it on the screen. Is there a wow moment that stands out after seeing it for the first time? Um, just the way it all came together. I mean, you picture something in your mind, but then to see it on the screen. I've only seen it on the computer and on my television screen yet. I haven't seen it on the big screen. Hope to see that next week. Well, but it's, it's just yeah. a thrill. I hope that happens so soon for you. And DJ, uh, first off, man, congratulations. I was reading a lot of your interviews you've done recently, and I remember in one of them you said, you got the sense that this cast knew this was a special project. Can you elaborate on that a little more, man? And you're, whoops, there you go. As you're making the movie and the cast comes together and you start the rehearsal process and you start to build this wonderful cast, you really got a sense that it was something bigger than us. And I think whenever a movie has such strong themes and things that you can anchor in, it's really easy for the filmmaker and the cast to kind of unify and, and, make, and know we're doing something special. What kind of pressure do you put on yourself when you're dealing with a novel uh, that is really, really famous and has had fans since the early 90s? Yeah. <laughs> You have pressure in that when someone reads a book, it's so subjective. Everything that person has, every experience they have, is what they're putting into their interpretation of the novel. And so obviously I have my own subjective view of what it is. But what I did was just sort of trust what my vision was, knowing that Francine created such strong themes throughout that those themes would be the anchors. Um, but of course, you're nervous. I mean, even when I'm working on the script with Francine and my wife's reading it, she's like, why did you take that scene out? You can't take that scene out. You have to put the scene in. And you go, well, you can't, you know. And so, like, you can make a whole movie about the Altmans if you wanted to, you know. Um, so, no, but you have pressure. Um, I really felt an obligation, sort of a reverence towards the material that I just wanted to do it. Awesome. Uh, Abby, can we just give it one more time for Abby? Just this unbelievable performance. Abby, I was going through your Instagram, your social media, and in every post you kept talking about how special this project is to you. Can you talk to us about that? Because it's clear in your post and on your face uh, what, what this meant to you. Um, can you hear me? We got you. Hello? Okay. We got working mics. Um, I mean, there's so many reasons. I mean, reading the script for the first time, I was just in awe of the authenticity and the rawness of it all. Um, I feel like a lot of times stories like these, we don't fully go there. And when I read the script, I was like, oh, wow, they went there. And, you know, it is a story where you have to in order to kind of portray the true struggles of what this woman goes through. And, um, yeah, and the love story as well. I mean, who doesn't love a, a good love story? Uh, yeah, but it is insanely special to me. I um, wrote DJ an essay, literally an essay. Okay, do um, tell. Emailed him, yeah, an entire essay about why I was so passionate about this role. <laughs> Probably looked like a psychopath, but I mean, you know, here I am. But uh, yeah, I 
was very, very passionate about it. And I just feel like this is a story that needs to be told, and it's a topic that isn't really talked about enough. Um, and I just love the way that it was portrayed, and I love that we were able to actually go there with, you know, the scenes that were, you know, pretty rough, but needed to be done, so, yeah. DJ, at any point after reading what she sent you, were you like, I, there's no chance I can even say no to her now? There, well, <laughs> this girl's crazy. <laughs> She's gonna show up to my house. Um, I might need to borrow oh, yeah. your mic, yeah. No, uh, it's, whenever you have someone that passionate about something, you know that you're gonna get 100%, if not more than that, and so, First of all, she read so beautifully that I was convinced that she can do it. So I had no, no doubt about it. But then once you receive something like that, you understand. And Abby went into the history, and her mom had read the book, and she had read the book long ago. So it just, you know, it just, uh, just makes it all that much better. Tom, how about that last scene, brother? Man, that, that was just insane. Did Lord you like Bagel it? Bagel starts playing, <laughs> and it, it is a moment. And I'm wondering if you could just bring us back to shooting that day. It was beautiful, yeah. That was like the last... That was our last day, wasn't it? We, and it took up a couple of goes because the timing for the sunset and Rohair had a lot of issues trying to, we had to like get it all t perfectly timed. I think we shot it in like, we had like 10 minutes each day to do it. Um, and it a worked out time, really right? good. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, there's a lot of stress on those days for a kissing moment as well, like the most, which is what got meant to be the most, yeah, relaxing thing. But um, we did a pretty good job, yeah, so we're very happy with it. How was the chemistry with, with you and Abby in the beginning? It was great. From like, from like, day one. Yeah, what's going on? Nice. Um, oh, we, yeah. Where did we meet? We met in like the makeup trailer. We literally met in South Africa. So yeah, we, didn't we know. had. You'd no seen my audition memory. tape, hadn't you, though? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen yours. Um, no. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd seen my tape, and then we, yeah, we met in the makeup trailer and we like got chatting. Um, and then we had a few rehearsals at DJ's, the place that GJ was staying, and it became immediately apparent that we just connected on this script, and we had a very, very similar um, way of working, and what we wanted to do with the scenes was exactly the same. And as soon as we had a few rehearsals, it was just kind of, we, we were like on one, we were just going straight away and making it all up as we went along, really, it was great. You definitely can tell on screen, and uh, I have some single friends here from Los Angeles. Do you recommend on the first date that they tell uh, their girlfriends that they want to get married? Is that some, or is that only? Yeah, that's, I odd. just, well, clearly it works, so <laughs> I just, that should be, yeah, on Tinder, that should be your tagline. Um, no, yeah, I think, um, I think it's one of those things about the story that you kind of have to, it's, you know, it's so alien to us nowadays to think that that would be, you know, a way of a relationship working, but there's so much love between them, and there's so much understanding, and Michael just gets Angel and sees that she, you know, there's that scene, and watching it on a big screen where she's um, like cutting herself with the rocks and trying to wash herself in the river, it's so moving, because you just think he sees her suffering so deeply in this self-loathing and all he wants to do is kind of save her from that um and that's why he sticks around really and just you know once you've met the one he's not going to settle for less so yeah so beautiful and livy where livy where did you learn how to act like that you're you're unbelievable so who do we give credit to <laughs> there, see <laughs> the people love you livy <laughs> uh Oh, it works. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I taped, um, I go to a, um, a couple of different acting places, but I taped this audition with um, a guy named John. I always pronounce his name wrong. John Wickershin. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce good his to last me. name. <laughs> um, but he was, he, he helped me book a lot of the roles that I got, and so he was really amazing to help me with this. We actually filmed one of the scenes on the floor. I was lying down. It was the one where Nina... Uh, <laughs> Remember it. <laughs> um, but he, he, he really helped me, and he's, he's really amazing. So, Is there a scene that comes to mind that you just, uh, when you think back on this experience, it'll, it'll always be the one that just was super meaningful to you, or just a moment with the cast? Um, well, I always think a really pivotal scene for, like, finding out Sarah's backstory is when you, like, hear herself saying to her mom, asking her what if she, well, what if she died? Would her mother be happier? And I think that's really shows that 
angel slash Sarah. <laughs> it really cares about how other people feel, and she's really selfless when she's doing those things. Well said. Nice job. Nice job, right? Bomka. Yeah. So great seeing you, you and oh. we we had such a, a nice chat out there and just an incredible career that you've had and um, before we jump into it where, where does this where does this land and, and when you look at all the projects you've done in terms of the meaning and the story and, and people seeing something so beautiful like this you know where it lands I'm not sure exactly other than that you know I've, I've made career choices over time just to go for characters rather than try to go for leads and you know build a career based on especially given my background and where I came from, sort of trying to do a more diverse you know, journey like that. Um, so this very much fits in that. Um, and it was, you know, DJ was somebody I really wanted to work with. The cast obviously is absolutely amazing. So are you. <laughs> and um, then, you know, this journey of a, a woman in 1850, um, you know, when I just think through Duchess, you know, um, a woman who in 1850 was an entrepreneur, somebody who already had a business going on her own. Um, and so I'm, I'm taking the moral aspect of, out of this, of you know, how did she treat people? Because as we see in 2022, men treat their staff worse, probably all the time. But you know, a, a woman in that time, it was unheard of to have your own business and really be so, I mean, I, I don't want to judge her morally or anything like that. Do I believe that that's the right way to treat people? Absolutely not. But I can see where she was coming from and very much a survivor. And then I think overall being part of a story where you have a woman um, like Angel played so beautifully by Abby. I, I think that s s having a story like that in a time like this where it's somebody who's been dealt a very rough hand, you know, a uh, very you know, terrible deck of cards that she has to live with. And then despite every evil force that um, she encounters people and, and life, she not only prevails, but she comes out stronger um, with love, you know, uh, bitterness and all of, I think in today's world, it's exactly the type of story that we need because we're all faced with this horrendous situation that we've been in for years. And so we have only one choice right now is what is gonna get us through this and how do we come out of this? Do we come out stronger? Do we come out with more love? Do we come out more unified? And I think that's very much what this story represents in a time like this. It's very important. Thank you. Yes. Well said. So many beautiful takeaways. And um, Nina, we have reached the time with you. First off, happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I know you've worked with DJ in the past. Can you kind of compare the experiences, how they're different? <laughs> you know, I don't think they're that different. Action movie and what you just watched, everyone in the theater, same thing, right? Yeah. Uh, no, DJ and I worked on on a action movie called Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, and that was so, so fun in a very different way. But this one was extremely um, fun and challenging and, and beautiful in the place that we shot in South Africa, which was incredible. Um, but the, the story behind this film and the themes and, and what it stands, it, it just... There's a depth to it and, and a, um, you know, you walk out of the theater, uh, sorry DJ, I don't know that we learned a lot in Triple X when we left the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Besides we not- We learned how to fire machine guns. That's true, that's very true. <laughs> but this one, there's, there's just a little bit, um, a lot more meaning behind it and it's a beautiful story about survival and how strong women can be and and i mean you guys put it beautifully like the the women despite the era that they grew up in and all the difficulties that they were faced with really prevailed and came out with love and, and my character in particular led with love that was her her you know her achilles heel in so many ways because you know she was hopeful in a situation that maybe shouldn't have been hopeful and she should have been a little bit more cautious but she led with love and thought that it would prevail and her love for her daughter and did everything that she possibly could to make sure that she survived and you know unfortunately it didn't turn out great for either of them for a little while but despite that 
she still found her way in the end, which is really, really beautiful. And I think that's the biggest lesson, like, like Femka said, that, my God, times are tough right now, but we will prevail. And at some point we will get to a better and happier place and finding love and connection is the, the most important thing throughout that process. Yeah, amen to that. You can clap for sure. <laughs> Francine, you know, you're, you're, I see the smile on your face and you're, you know, hearing everybody talk about this, uh, you know, book that you put so much time and effort and now all these years later, it's back on the radar and it's going to be a new generation of people. Um, can you share just the excitement that you have for that and for, for newbies to, to hear about this? Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited about it because it really the whole idea of the story is that no matter what you've been through, you know, or no matter what's been done to you, you know, you, your past doesn't have to define you, you know, that you can start fresh and that, you know, with God, you're loved. I mean, the people are precious. So that's what I hope people will come away with this. They'll know that they are very special. And Abby, whether it's, you know, true love or forgiveness, I mean, there are so many takeaways like we talked about tonight. What, what do you hope the audience takes away from this film? Gosh, I mean, there's so many things that, I mean, can be taken away from this. Um, personally, I, I hope that um, eyes are open to the reality of kind of the world that a lot of women live in. Um, the reality of abuse and the psychological impacts of it. Um, I hope that, you know, as I said before, it's not a huge, you know, hugely talked about subject. So um, I hope that it kind of gets people talking and um, understanding a little bit of, of, what, of what it can do to people and um, that it's not so, you know, black and white. It can be a plethora of things and um, yeah I, I personally I hope that um, I also hope that people you know as you were saying walk away with with hope and um, with a feeling of peace because the story is a story of redemption and of love overall and it is a message of just love and you know I love I love that you, love, love, love. Um, I love, you know, when, when Michael says you didn't choose the life you had, but you can, um, but you can choose the life you want. Because that was it, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I really, I hope that people walk away knowing that, you know, you can't choose what you're born into. You can't choose what happens to you in life. And there's gonna be things that happen good and bad, but there is always hope and there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how, you know, hopeless you may feel or, you know, how dark it may seem in your life, there will always be, you know, something good at the end, so. Should we just let her preach or? <laughs> I'm, I'm with it, I'm with it. DJ, I know this is so much more than a film for you and your wife. Can you talk about that a little bit and then let everybody know here and, and watching um, how they can you know, blast this out and, and help the project along? Yeah, well, uh, my wife was so compelled. Um, she helped uh, with Francine form the Redeeming Love Sanctuary Foundation, which deals with helping sex, sex, sex traffic uh, survivors and, and women who are in need. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, thematically, it just, made so much sense and Francine is is a saint she all the profits that she's had from this book from all these years she's been giving back to to all the to all the survivors we call them not victims survivors um, and so yeah I think it's important if you anyone could get the word out on the redeeming love sanctuary um, it would be great and just go visit the website or encourage it and people give a dollar and every single cent that goes to it goes to these survivors um, so it's had a big impact on our life and our family and, 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 and our friends, and so that's, that's really important to us. And I think uh, thematically, too, I just think it's one of the things that I hope people get out of this because it's always so easy to say, oh, I forgive you. Or do you but when you see that last scene, one of the last scenes, particularly with, um, with Logan and with Abby and, and you're dealing with Paul and the forgiveness that's in that scene is so powerful and so strong and so real. Um, that I think one of the things I hope people get out of this is like to truly forgive and to put things in the past. It's, it's a lot easier 
to say that than it is to really do it. But I think that's a really important thing. And then also that the love from God, from Tom's character, from Michael, he doesn't judge her at all, okay? There is no judgment in that love. There is no, I'm going to change you, I want to change you. He lets her discover how beautiful she really is, and I think that's a very important message as well. One more time for the entire cast, virtually here in person. You all did an incredible job, and there are many ways that everybody here, specifically tonight, you can post and t please tag at Redeeming Love the Movie. I want to make sure I got that right. Yeah, Redeeming Love Movie. Redeeming Love Movie. Post uh, about your experience, the red carpet. But when it comes to any, um, uh, I guess, critiques of the film, only good, of course. Uh, save those for January 21st after the film actually comes out. So uh, anything like that, save that for January 21st. But tonight, we just want to blast it out. Tell your friends, uh, get them to the theaters uh, January 21st. And again, one more time for everybody tonight. Um, the entire cast of Redeeming Love. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Francine. Thank, Thank you, everybody. guys. Thank you. All right, that's it. Thank you guys for coming. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. January 21st, Redeeming Love. Bye, everybody. Ooh, yeah.